one. So like a lot of people during these crazy times, I've been mostly stuck at home. One of the things that has been keeping me sane through it all are the group video chats I've been having with some of my good friends. One of them included the nice guy slash neckbeard of this story, who I will call Ian, since it's closest to his real name. At the risk of sounding conceited, Ian has always had a little crush on me that was obvious to everyone, but other than trying very hard to impress me on multiple occasions, he never did anything too cringeworthy, and during the time of this story, I honestly thought he was over me. This was a couple weeks back, where the group and I were just talking about whatever popped into our heads. Don't remember how, but we started discussing celebrity crushes. There was mention of classic ones like Johnny Depp, and crushes on more recent celebrities like Sophie Turner and Amelia Clark, the latter being the one Ian had a thing for. Me being the Marvel nut I am, mentioned how I love both Tom Hiddleston and Chris Evans, but leaned more towards Chris. One of my friends was in the middle of saying how she preferred Chris Pratt when Ian interrupted. How can you pick Chris Evans over Tom Hiddleston? He's a total douche who likes sports and other stuff like that. You're not into that stuff. You have more in common with Tom because you're both cultured and love to read. Don't pick Chris just because he's better looking. The rest of us were a little baffled by this, mainly because of how personally offended he sounded. I'll admit that Chris is pretty to look at, and that yeah, I don't like football or working out, but I like guys who are more down to earth and that don't take themselves too seriously. That seems more like Chris. Plus, I like more of his movies than Tom. Mind you, I say my defense in a casual and playful tone to let him know that this wasn't meant to be a serious discussion, and someone else in the group decided to switch topics by saying how he'd love Chris in Knives Out, but not before Ian needed to mumble one more thing about girls always falling for the jocks instead of the men who actually have any brains. Again, this is just a small interaction among my group of friends that I thought was really weird. Luckily, he hasn't mentioned anything about it again. Two. This story happened about two years ago at my place of employment, I won't say the name of the company I worked for, but our job was to basically handle any service issues for whatever clients who hired us. The people in this story will obviously have their names changed. Me is me, Greaseball, Neckbeard, Katie, co-worker, and fixation of Greaseball. I first met Greaseball when he was assigned to my team. No one on our team was particularly thrilled about this because he already had a reputation during his time in training. He pretty much fit the stereotypical neckbeard. Overweight, scraggly beard that was mostly on his neck. That was probably for the best, since when he shaved he looked like a giant man-baby. And he always had some kind of anime shirt on. He didn't always smell, but when he did it was horrible. Like I had to cover my nose and breathe through my mouth. Unfortunately, Greaseball's desk was right next to mine. He was always bringing in these Gundam toys and putting them on his desk. He was also one of those guys who hated it when you called them toys. He'd freak out and say that they aren't toys, they're... <clears throat> models. To make matters worse for me, I was team captain, which is basically the second in command of the team, which meant that whenever my boss, the team leader, wasn't around, any issues that other team members had would be dealt with by me. And since Greaseball couldn't get along with anyone else on the team, this would lead to complaints and sometimes straight-up yelling matches, which myself or the team lead would have to stop. So this all started during one of our bi-weekly meetings. The company I worked for at the time was international, so there was always some small rule change or update in policy that required us to do an hour-long meeting to go over what was changing. We'd go into small groups, and at designated times we'd sit down with the trainer and discuss the changes. I had already finished my work and asked my boss if I could head to the meeting a little early, which he had no problems with. I ended up being the first one there, so I got on my phone and just hung out for a bit. Before long, people started filing in and taking their seats. This is where Katie comes in. 
I'd never really talked to her before, but I'd seen her around. She was really short with blonde hair and big brown eyes, incredibly attractive, and incredibly friendly to just about everyone. She comes in and sits two seats to my left, leaving one seat between us. We start chatting a little bit, nothing flirty at this point, just your basic hi, how you doing type stuff. This is when Greaseball comes stumbling through the door. At this point, there are no seats left besides the one between me and Katie. Katie, being the friendly person that she is, waves Greaseball over and says, I saved you a seat right here. Greaseball looked at her, and the moment I saw the look on his face, I knew I was in for a show. So Greaseball comes rushing over to sit down. As he's sitting, Katie mentions that she likes the shirt he's wearing, some anime graphic shirt. Greaseball thanks her before glancing over at me. I didn't make eye contact or anything. I just gave him a quick, what's up, and focused in on the trainer, who's starting her presentation. We actually made pretty good time because we got through the meeting ten minutes ahead of schedule, and because of this, we got to do whatever for ten minutes. I pulled my phone back out and started looking through my newsfeed. It's at this point when Greaseball starts bombarding Katie with questions. He asked her if she had ever watched the anime that was on his shirt, and she politely said no, and that she wasn't into anime. I never felt so much cringe in my life. I turned on my music and put my earbuds in to try and drown out the sounds of Greaseball. Katie leans over and sees me listening to music. She jumped up and asked what I was listening to. I offered her one of my earbuds. I knew this was kind of an excuse to get away from Greaseball, so I rolled with it. Katie asked if Greaseball would switch seats. He glared at me before looking back at her, and grumbling, stood up and swapped seats with her. Greaseball looked off and started talking to someone a few rows ahead of him, while Katie and I listened to music. She made sure he wasn't listening before she thanked me for helping her get out of Greaseball's grasp. We talked for the rest of the time, and we actually hit it off. She started getting flirty, and I flirted back. Greaseball noticed this, and it was clear he was furious about it. At the end of the meeting, she gave me her number, and I gave her mine. I left to go back to my team, and Greaseball was right on my tail. He grabbed my shoulder to stop me and demanded to know what I was doing. I told him I didn't know what he was talking about. He then starts to go on a rant about how he and her were talking, and I had no right to interrupt that. I laughed it off and told him to get back to work. For the rest of my time working for that company, Greaseball had a personal grudge against me. It only got worse after Katie and I actually started dating. And even to this day, long after I quit, my friends who still work there said he still grumbles about it to anyone who will listen. And for the curious, yes, we are still dating. 3. There's a kid I went to school with for basically my entire life. I'm going to refer to him as Mort, because that's an actual nickname kids gave him. It's nowhere near close to his actual name, so hopefully this will keep his identity safe. Mort was a typical neckbeard, short, plump, greasy brown hair, and a baby face covered in acne. I recall seeing Mort around since elementary school, but I never truly interacted with him until sixth grade orientation. I was a shy and socially awkward kid, so I didn't have many friends. Eventually Mort and I bumped into each other, and we struck up a conversation. This was a long time ago, so I don't remember most of the details, but I do remember that he seemed to have this strange obsession with Doctor Who. I've seen a few episodes of Doctor Who when I was really young, but I never really got into it. So I was mostly uninterested in his constant talk of Doctor Who. Maybe I'm just rude, and it's not a bad thing to really enjoy a TV show. I guess I just really had no interest in hearing about Doctor Who. Again, like I said before, I was extremely shy, so I didn't have the nerve to speak up and ask if we could change the subject. So for most of middle school orientation, I just sat nodding my head and saying, Uh-huh, as he talked and talked about Doctor Who. This experience wasn't that bad, I'll admit. It still felt fairly neckbeardy to me. During my middle school years, I didn't interact with Mort too much. I do remember one of my friends kind of hung out with him and bullied him, sort of. It's kind of weird. 
He'd hang out with Mort, but he never seemed to like him at all. I'm no longer friends with this guy. Nowadays, he's mostly just a frat boy douche. Looking back at it, I probably should have stood up for Mort. But I was already being bullied so much in middle school, and I didn't want to make any new enemies or draw attention to myself. I never really understood why people would bully Mort. But I think that's because I never spent any extensive time with him. But when we entered high school, I discovered why he so disliked. In high school, I had even less friends than in middle school, so during lunch periods I just kind of zipped about, trying to find someone I know who tolerates me. One of the people I frequently saw was an old friend, M. M and I used to be best friends in elementary school, but we drifted after because we just had different interests. He was still a nice guy, though, and I don't think he minded me hanging out with him. However, M is a very well-liked guy. I go as far as to say he was friends with everyone, and yes, that includes Mort. Most times I hung out with him. M would spend lunch with Mort. I'm not sure why, but to each of their own, I guess. I don't remember any of the things we'd talk about, but I do remember whenever I opened my mouth to say anything. Mort would usually respond in a condescending tone, telling me how I'm wrong and an idiot. Sometimes we'd watch YouTube poops on our phones. One time we were watching videos on Mort's phone, and I couldn't see well, so I moved behind his shoulder. Without warning, Mort elbowed me in the face and yelled at me for looming over his shoulder. I proceeded to say some pretty hurtful things. I don't remember how I reacted, but looking back, I probably held back tears. I'm a sensitive little bitch. After that, I never hung out with Mort again. I was genuinely terrified of him. However, I can't help it if I ended up being in the same class as him, which I was. I shared 10th grade biology class with him. I don't remember talking to him that much, but I do remember one time, somehow, I do not for the life of me remember how, the conversation in class somehow got to the topic of Japan. I remember out of absolutely nowhere, Mort stood up, said something in Japanese, and then bowed to the teacher. That's a memory I'd like to suppress. I even remember this one girl in class. Her eyes were wide open and was staring at Mort as if he was some lunatic, which he kind of was. Those are all my experiences with Mort, but that's not the end of the story. After high school, my friends and I mostly fucked around and hung out, and a few times Mort was brought up. One of my friends, O, told me about an interaction he had with Mort. Now, O was admittedly a hypocrite and was kind of a neckbeard himself, but unlike most neckbeards, O was actually extremely intelligent. He wasn't bullied, and he honestly had the energy of a bully himself. One year in high school, it was Halloween, and Mort had come in dressed as Bilbo Baggins, the cutest little hobbit of them all. O is a bit of a bully, like I said, and he loves to mess with people. He walked up to Mort and said, Who are you supposed to be? Mort scoffed and replied, saying, I'm dressed as Bilbo Baggins. I don't remember how O set up the punchline, but O essentially called him Dildo... <clears throat> well, you can work out the rest. Mort huffed and puffed, and he spun around and used his hand to swoosh his cape in the air. In doing this, his cape got stuck on a desk, I think. I don't remember what O said. It got caught on, if I'm being honest. O proceeded to laugh at him, as he pulled and tugged on his cape. When he finally got it loose, he fell over onto his back. He struggled to get up, but when he did, he sprinted out of the classroom. Speaking of sprinting, something I and everyone else in the school had seen him do is sprint down the hallways on his way to every class. Now, this wasn't a regular sprint. It wasn't really a Naruto run, either. However, it was equally as embarrassing. When he sprinted, he'd bend his arms in a right angle, and would swing his arms side to side. As I said before, Mort was a very heavy lad, so even though he was sprinting, he was never really running that fast. And if you looked at his face, you could see him huffing and puffing and gasping for air. Those are all the things I remember about Mort. I have no idea what he's up to now. Few things more to add, though, is that Mort was very condescending. He often talked as if he was above everyone else. 
he clearly believed he had superior intelligence. However, the ironic thing is that he had terrible grades. Last piece of info I have. I never saw Mort during my senior year of high school, but according to O, Mort was starting to develop a bald spot. And he's only 18 years old. 4. I am an 18-year-old guy, born in Italy, and still living there, and three years ago I ran into a legbeard without knowing what a legbeard was. I was attending high school, and I decided to sign up to an afternoon class, with my friend S to get an English certificate. There I met the legbeard. G. G wasn't unattractive. Long brown hair, dark brown eyes, a decent body, and, let's say, a lively personality. She was extremely into Harry Potter, anime, and manga. At first, I didn't notice her because she was in a corner of the class, but my friend kept saying that a girl kept looking at me, more than at the blackboard, but I just ignored her, hoping she would eventually stop. She didn't. The following lesson, the professor gave us a task to do with four classmates. So me and my friend waited for two other people to join us. And would you look at that? The legbeard and her almost invisible friend immediately came to us. I knew that she was the girl from the other lesson who kept staring at me. But I didn't mind having her in my team, so we accepted to work with them. Big mistake. From that moment, she kept hugging me tightly to her chest, making me extremely uncomfortable. And when I told her to stop, she kept saying, why? Don't tell me that you're shy. Or, oh, come on, just a few more seconds. I was, and still kind of am, extremely shy and borderline asexual. So for me, those situations were extremely uncomfortable and embarrassing. Then she still didn't care and kept doing what she wanted. I endured her behavior because I didn't want to make a scene or draw the attention toward me. So she kept taking advantage of me and sometimes touching me in my private areas. I think it can be classified as sexual harassment. She also followed me everywhere, even outside of school, and bombarded me with phone messages. This behavior kept going on until one day she did a thing that broke the camel's back. Me, the legbeard, and her friend were at a table in the backyard, with nobody else, eating lunch and waiting for the class to start. We were talking about random shit when, suddenly, she licked my neck. But that's not all. When I turned my face towards her to ask what the fuck she was doing, she kissed me on the lips in front of her friend. What the fuck are you doing? Didn't you like it? Of course not, it wasn't consensual. But I did it because I love you. I don't, and surely I won't end up loving you now. At this point, I start packing my stuff to leave, and she hugs my arm tightly to her chest. Stop now. Please, wait a minute. S came into the backyard to eat lunch with me and discover what she just did. Back off, G. I'm calling the principal. At this point, some people started to come into the backyard to see what the fuss was about. So she backed off and called her mother to pick her up from school early. She tried to get back at me, making one last attempt to convince me to have sex with her, where I blocked her in every social media. So for the rest of the year, she avoided me, and once the year ended, she changed school. 5. It all started one night in summer, when me and my housemate Rob decided to dust off his copy of Return of the King on PS2. One of the greatest pieces of art to ever grace my eyes. After an hour or so, we're halfway through the southern gate level, balls deep in dead orcs and trolls. Then the door opens and it's Craig, another housemate. He comes in and watches us play for a bit, not really being into video games himself. We ended up on the topic of D&D &D and I said that I would want to try it, but didn't have anyone to play with, but I might go down to the local gaming cafe to see if I could just join a group. Surprisingly, Craig seemed keen for it as well, saying he knew it was really tactical like his favorite game ever, chess. To be clear, it seems that a lot of people involved in other stories I've read have been familiar with this sort of community and similarish hobbies and stuff. 
we were not. We were the kind of guys at college that will go out, parties, trying to be social hubs, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Think general college douchebags, I guess. Sports, drinking and going out, that was our scene. Me and Craig end up going to the games cafe the next week, and spoke to the guy who worked there, spent £30 on a setup and asked him about finding other players. He says there was a group who came in who had just lost three players, so he would ask them, saying they would probably be in later if we were around. Me and Craig went over for a few beers in my bar, not actually mine, I was just head bartender, and went back to the cafe a few hours later. The guy who worked at the cafe ended up introducing us to this group sat on a table. There were three guys, two being regular looking nerdy guys and normal attire, Adam and Chris. The other was almost as wide as the two of them put together, about 5'8", longish brown hair that looked on wash, no fedora. But there was a hefty trench coat wrapped around him, Liam the Neckbeard. There were also two girls, one being your regular looking small chubbyish goth girl with black hair and a few tattoos, Alice, and the other being your regular slim hot goth alt girl with bright red hair, Laura. We ended up playing for a few hours and then called it a night. The others went home and me and Craig went home to get ready to go out. We gave Adam our numbers and he added us to the WhatsApp group for the game. Sometime that next week, Craig decided that he wasn't really into the fantasy side of D&D, and had instead found another game which is the same basic principle, but was space-themed instead. I decided to go back to the group as I'd enjoyed the game and wanted to keep playing. Plus there was the whole low-key wanting to go back to see Laura who I'd definitely taken a liking to. During the game that day the conversations were flowing a bit better. We were talking about where we worked and studied, they were students and stuff like that. Got a good and friendly vibe from everyone except for Liam who I thought was just a bit weird at the time, but looking back he might have been trying to intimidate me or something. After we finished we were talking about what we were doing that night, the guys, me included, were planning to just go home and do whatever basically, and the girls were going round Alice's to drink wine and watch something. Seeing a chance I said hey why don't we go out for a few. The other guys weren't big drinkers but said yeah sure and the girls agreed as well. I took them to a bar where one of my old managers worked, just to flex a bit, to be honest. I was new to the group, can you blame me? In my city, you tend to give people you used to work with VIP services and discounts if they come into your place when you're working. It's great. After a few hours, we moved to another bar, one which is an industry hotspot where everyone goes when they finish work. We get a table and we end up talking about relationships, and it comes out that everyone's single, basically. Alice jokes about how all men are trash, she don't need no man, that sort of stuff. Liam says something similar about women, but with a more serious tone. Women our age go for a-holes. Good guys finish last, that kind of shit. He also seemed pretty drunk. I don't think any of the guys were massive drinkers. A few drinks later, he ended up turning to Laura and saying, When is it that girls want to stop messing around and settle down? Whenever I'm not looking for anything in particular, still, just see what happens. Well, we could always go back to mine and see what happens. I remember thinking, fuck, did he really say that? And Laura came back with a, I'm staying at Alice's, she'll get lonely. He comes back with, wow, there's room for three, the more the merrier. <laughs> I was exchanging looks with Adam and Chris, who just sort of rolled their eyes as if to say, Ugh, not again. As you can imagine, the atmosphere was awkward after that, but I unintentionally saved the day when I was hounded by a group of other bartenders I knew who just got off work. That gave the girls an excuse to leave as well, and they went home. Liam went home, Adam and Chris stayed for one more with us, but called it a day when we brought in the tequila shots. Pussies. Just to confirm, there are more stories than just this one. This was just the beginning. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Neckbeards in the Wild, number 47. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Okay, I think this goes up on a... Yes, it goes up on a Sunday. You think I'd know that by now. Uh, any shoutouts? Uh, no, nobody wanted one this video. Okay. Okay, I'm going to keep this out to a bit on the short side this week. Uh, let me see. I probably did a stream yesterday. Uh, if all went well, I would have. 
Uh, not sure when the next one will be, but I'll try and give you a little bit of notice, unless it's just one of my spontaneous streams. You know what I'm like with those. Okay, and with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourself.